This is how we make the moonshine. Danielle. Henry. You did make it, didn't you? I did. How you doing? You right on time. Right on time. It's good seeing you again. Good to see you. Oh, it's been a while. It has been a while. I met Danielle Parton down in Tennessee. She's Dolly Parton's niece. We were judges at Master Distiller. Got that little bite. It's the internal hug I was needing. <laughs> I mean, this girl has done a lot of stuff in her lifetime. Kenny, how you doing? I have my own distillery, so I don't distill in the woods, but I've come from a long line of moonshining, so I really want to learn the authentic ways to running this liquor. I didn't get to learn from my grandfathers and my great-grandfathers. They're not around to teach me what to do, what not to do, so I want to fill in the gaps of what I don't know. Make it work. That's exactly right. She fell in there, grabbed the drill, grabbed the hammers. You know, we're not building it for her. We're building it with her. We do want to make a damn nice deal, man. I've never made any look around a woman. Lines right up, don't it? I think it looks good. She's got an awesome personality. All right, we can do it. And she don't mind pitching on in and helping you. Tell you the truth, she do a whole lot more than a lot of men. I think I need a bigger one. I can make it into a hot okay. tub. <laughs> I used to have one on my back porch. How many ladies did it hold? Quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I knew I was coming up here to work with two giants in this field of moonshine. Can you get it? Can you pull it back? Yeah. I'm just so thankful that I have the opportunity to come and learn the craft of making moonshine with two dudes that have served time in federal prison for it. There's not anybody better. Maybe I'll name this thing Submarina. Oh. I don't know what I'm What would your ancestors say? Your, your name is still Submarina. They strained their eyes on me a long time ago for all of them. <laughs> the subs are completely different from anything that I have seen. There's so much ingenuity and engineering that goes into it, but there's also an awful lot of delicate craftsmanship. Like I said, hands-on is the way to go. Let's get it down here. Let's get something mashed in then. What kind of mash should we do? I have been thinking about one. Every moonshine's got her own little recipes. We got a surprise for her. Tennessee hydrometer. Oh, here we go. She's changing up on me already. I about had enough of you with his fingers. <laughs> How's he getting better? Well, today we're going to run off the peach brandy that we mixed up. And I'm super excited. Now I get to see it all work. The biggest thing with these is if you get up on that steel, they'll sink to the bottom and tend to burn. They'll leave mm -hmm. a terrible taste. So you won't be able to get rid of the brandy. Kind of bitter, like yeah. You going to grab his hose and I'm going to crank the pump? Yep. Daniel's worked hard through this whole project. You know, she's never operated a submarine steel before. That's a brand new ball game. There you go. So to bring her in to be able to show her some of the stuff that some of my ancestors have done, it's a good day. You gotta watch your legs and you probably pull it from over here. All right, now Danny, see how far it comes up there? Check yeah. that. You want it to come up that far. Right about tip, your right about okay. tip. If you don't, if you leave that mash too low and that fire comes up over it, it's what you call cake burn. You'll start burning on these ends. Oh, really? So you don't, a lot of people try to cut corners uh -huh. by leaving it low. Better off fill it up. You got to fill it still up. Okay. Well, then we should have liquor soon, shouldn't we? I'm smelling it in here. Okay. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, come on, baby. There we go. Oh, yeah. No, it sure does smell good to the top of the line. How do you know, looking at the beads, exactly what ballpark you're in? The lower the proof, the smaller the bead. If you could guess if I had a hydrometer, what would that be? I'm uh, guessing about 110. That's what I'd like to say is between 105 and 110. Well, I'll be thirsty if we'll get up to you. <laughs> <laughs> what y'all think? Cheers. Looks good. Cheers. Good stuff. It was mild, isn't it? That's fantastic. <laughs> it came out so smooth. Just a touch of the peach smell, but it wasn't overpowering, fruity, sweet. I think it turned out perfect, and it's exactly what you want a brandy to be. It can't be any better. This one right here on the side of the road. Check that stuff out. That looks pretty good. It's got some pretty good leaves on it, too. We think he's four or five right here good enough? This will be plenty. Do what we need to do? Check these leaves out, how furry they are. I'll tell you what, they're pretty soft, ain't they? They are, until that felt. Yeah. Good for wiping that hind end with. I can see say. why the cowboys use it for toilet paper. I'm going to have to try that. This is freebie, too. Yeah, that's a nice one. Got some big old leaves on it. Well, the mullein's got a kind of a peppery taste to the leaf. I figured maybe adding some good green peppers of a couple different types 
will help make it pop with flavor and maybe bring just a little bit of warmth to the throat. We like that free stuff, don't we? Yeah, interesting plant, I can tell you that. We're gonna have to head to the woods, get to the steel site, get this stuff mashed in and see what it's gonna taste like off that money pipe. Well, we'll get some damn mullein mashed in. We probably got six or seven good stalks, which is way plenty enough to do a run with. This stuff is very, very potent. I know this stuff is strong, but it's got a better taste and aroma. That smell is like none other. No, it's nice, ain't it? It is like surprise, it really. On a peppery note. Look at that, it's just turning that water real good. Yeah, it is, already. We've got our mulling leaves in here, letting it macerate, do its thing. We're gonna cut the fire down and strain our mulling tea. Ooh, look at Ooh, that. Ooh, that's pretty. It's cooled off enough to where we can put our hand in the tea. Let's strain this over and pour it back in the pot. So basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this nice clean white pillowcase. We strain it all off. That way we don't have any particles, no dirt, no hairs off of the leaves that tickles your throat. Look at there. Nice clean tea. Then we're gonna pour it back into the pot and then start adding a little bit of pepper to them. It's gonna help give this tea a little bit of spice. Let's get some pepper going, son. Sweetie sugar, till it gets down there around the butt end of it. The damn bull's the same way. Wait till you get to the butt end. What is it? Mm. Huh? Tail's wrong with you already? Pepper just shut by. Oh, hell. Mm. He's real sensitive to peppers. I just want to bring that peppery flavor out even more with the peppers into a nice, subtle, warm drink. You know what that almost reminds me of? What's that? A fresh pizza with pepper on it. Oh yeah, and that's what we're looking for, is that good peppery flavor. Nothing to scare anybody off that drinks it, but they'll be like, oh damn, that's good. So let's taste it and see what it's gonna be like. Hell yeah, let's give us a little taste of it. Hot, hot. Yeah, that's warm. I'm definitely tasting the peppers. You're the sensitive one to peppers. Take you a little sip. Tell me what you think. If you think we need to add some more, we will. If we don't, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> Holy mother of pearl. I think we got enough in it. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. We got enough in it, for sure. I tell you what, I sure hope this liquor calms down a little bit with that hot, spicy taste or else Mike's gonna be our only customer. Oh, it's about time, there he is. Man, I've been looking for you all day. Man, I've been looking for you half the day. Man, Man we don't have no cell phone reception. I know. I'm really excited that Craig's getting a chance to run Lick out here in the mountains with me. I mean, it's like a dream come true for me to be out here and use this water and be running out here. But to give that experience to my little brother is, that's awesome to me. You got my little quad? Got him. We do loquat leaves all the time in Louisiana, but it has to be a twist or something for me to go all the way up to Tennessee. This is fresh. People down here don't know about loquat. I'm just anxious to see what comes out of this. Oh, you got some Tennessee shine for me, huh? Yeah, this is the real deal. Taste that. It's their number one seller at the bootlegger. And he's selling mimosa liquor. It's a little perfumey, a little medicinal taste to it. They stepping on my toes. I'm the medicine man when it comes to alcohol. Mike and Jerry made it. Really? I got to hand it to Mike and Jerry. This is a damn good idea, but I can blow that out of the water. This right here with this and that mimosa. This is our Appalachian Louisiana moonshine. We're going to make this mimosa watermelon loquat moonshine. We're going to beat Mike and Jerry at their own game. I got this screen material, Craig. We're going to make some tea bags. I'm gonna start out making a base with the tea, with the mimosa and the low quality. leaf. That's what I do when I deal with herbs and alcohol. I make a tea as my base, as opposed to just using the water. I think a little bit of this stuff goes a really, really long way. That's where Mike and Jerry fell short, that they used a lot of mimosa and the taste is overpowered. So we're gonna do this the right way. We're gonna cut back on the amount of mimosa that we use to make sure that we get a, enough, but not too much of it, and add a little bit of that watermelon and see if we could get a better tasting drink than they made. I like using these tea bags because it won't scorch, and also we don't have to go back and get all of this stuff out of the mash, man. This pot's steaming good already. Do the burrito method. You smell that? Smell it. Oh, it's changing colors already. I can see instantly that this is working. 
Look, I'm gonna cut them up. Oh, you got the big knife. Give me the slices after you cut it. You need five watermelons in either, each one of these things. How much of that juice you're getting out of there? Like Mary Poppins said, a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. And there's a whole lot of sugar in here. Let's taste this. See? Yep, look at that. It's hot. Oh, that's a pretty color. That's all I smell. I can't smell any mimosa in here. I don't know if I got watermelon just stuck in my head, but that reminds me of watermelon. Yeah, that's pretty damn good. And all we're gonna do is build up on this. It's a little perfumey, but not to worry, because we still have to sweeten it up with our watermelon. This is gonna be one of the best liquors, if not the best liquor that I've made before. That's it for the watermelon. That's it for the tea. That's it for the day. All we gotta do is yeast this stuff in. Yeah, yeah get you a big full one. What's the proof? I don't even care what the proof is. Give me my fruit salad. Oh. That's it. This is good. I can taste the low quality. I can taste the mimosa. And then we get to that watermelon. It tastes like a watermelon tea. Kudzu began its US invasion at the 1876 World's Fair. Imported from Japan, it was marketed as a decorative plant for backyards and gardens. Then, in a response to the ravages of the Dust Bowl, the Department of Agriculture envisioned another use for kudzu and funded large-scale planting as a means to fight soil erosion. With its wildfire growth of one foot per day, kudzu quickly established dominance across the landscape strangling everything from crops to tall trees and smothering roads, barns, and houses in a deadly embrace. But because kudzu covers the landscape without rooting, it did nothing to stop erosion. Over the rest of the century, it infested over 200 million acres of land and came to be known as the vine that ate the south. Kudzu multiplies like wildfire. It goes up in trees, it'll grow up the side of your buildings, it'll take completely over. But this stuff is very edible. You can eat every part of this from the tips to the root to the leaves, except the pod on it. And guess what? Another thing, it helps with blood pressure, heart disease, man. You I name it, it's got almost every medical property in it a man could ask for. You looked out back here? Oh yeah. Dude, it's taking over my building back here. I'm afraid it's gonna tear my siding off. We can get all we need for free. Mm -hmm. Let's try to cook some of this stuff down and see what it tastes like. See what happens. Yeah, I'm a little apprehensive. Trying to make a, a moonshine out of a weed is kind of like something that we've never done. I mean, look at look at this upside this mountain up through here, how it's taking over. I mean, can you imagine if really good? Yeah. Oh, we got a couple thousand runs right here in we the back. We got the mother load, man, if it works. But hey, you know, it's something new, it's something different. Might be a great seller. It's got a good taste, I like it. That's green bean all day long. It man. tastes just like a green bean. To my knowledge, I don't know of anyone that's ever made an alcohol using kudzu. But I know they use it for teas, so why not make the tea into an alcoholic beverage to present to your customers? There we go. You never know, people may start harvesting this stuff to eat for the, the medical properties. Yeah, this could be like the new kale, you know? When I was a kid, I never heard of anything like that. Now right. it's kales and everything. It smells good. Come smell. It smells like a tea, like a brown tea. It smells really good to me. We're rolling over here, buddy. We got liquor? Yep. Let's put a worm in it. My God. It smells down cantaloupe, don't it? If it tastes anything like it smells, I'll be a satisfied man. Well, I'm gonna pitch these heads out. Looks like he's gonna try to rain on us. You reckon where it's these camouflage nets back over there just to help? I'd fix and say it probably wouldn't hurt nothing. We don't even know how this run's gonna turn out yet. And I'll be damned if it's gonna try to start raining on us. We may not even make it through it. I'm scared it's gonna condense back in the pot and it won't run. So we cover the pot and the arm up a little bit, hoping we can get through this run. Here, swap that jar, let me have that. There you go. Here's the test of all down times now. It's time to taste it and see what we think. You good? Yes, indeed. This alcohol is tasting damn good. The cantaloupe's coming through. Just a faint taste of the kudzu's coming through. I really like it. I got a really good note of the cantaloupe in there. 
we come up with something special, something different. This liquor will be sold in an instant. 